Okay, so I just wanted to go over uh, this video that again my friend James or more more uh, popularly known as Shredded Sports Science, uh, he made a video basically about my kind of my journey and my transformation, <laughs> and he also um, <laughs> he also made fun of me a little bit, which I liked. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go over it, share my thoughts, maybe give a little bit of background, um, maybe fix some mistakes maybe that he brought up. I don't think there were any, but you know if there were, I can kind of uh, you know be able to address them. Uh, but yeah, let's watch this video. Obese to beast, lost a huge amount of fat so Ellen could give him a free car. Selfish. Thank you for watching. <laughs> That's literally exactly why I did it. Yeah, precisely. See you next week. After losing an incredible 160 pounds, our next guest. Welcome to the positive health message playlist. Welcome to Shredder Sports Science. I sing really well in the shower, trust me. And firstly, thank you for watching my last video, a little light-hearted poke at some fitness industry silliness. This is not that. This video is intended to project a powerful fitness message, not just going from a state of morbid obesity to a healthier body composition, which is significant in itself, but also having a tough environment from which to make that change, not initially having access to trainers or a gym, for example. And also a fitness journey evolves. And I thought that he did, so I, I've already seen this video, um, just so you guys know. Um, but I thought he did a great job of sharing more than just, oh, he ate less food and now he works out and everything's good. He really went kind of step by step. And the video that he he's mainly uh, kind of referencing and the video that he's mainly showing is actually uh, a video from CrossFit. They came down and they made a video about me. They came to my gym. And they so the video that he's kind of like reacting to or sharing his thoughts on is on CrossFit's, uh, it's on their YouTube channel. If you type in like obese to beast CrossFit, it'll probably pop up. They did a great job. Like, no joke, their video that they did on me still to this day is probably the best video that shares my journey from start to where I am now the best. So it's a great video. I'm glad that he picked that one because I feel like he picked a perfect video to do this on. And once you reach a healthier state of composition, then finding a training protocol which helps you with that consistency where you've built a community. Going to my CrossFit gym and seeing my friends there, seeing my brother there, seeing everyone there, it really is like a family. And then to strive for new goals. Now I eat to perform and like I eat to feel good. That is the powerful fitness message of Obese to Beast. And yes, I'm going to continue to call him Obese to Beast throughout this whole video because it sounds way cooler than John. Obese to Beast. Real name John. A guy who's... Yeah, it definitely sounds better than John. <laughs> ...braver than me who posts picture of his loose skin and essentially says these are his battle scars. This is his journey and he feels comfortable in his skin. And also this video is not just about obesity. This can be applied to other body recompositions from certain states to healthier states. <laughs> <laughs> Before we begin, CrossFit, that is what we call a hot potato of a topic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I saw this, that he was going to be talking about CrossFit, I've seen James's videos before about CrossFit. He's not like a super CrossFit hater, but he's also not a, uh, a super fan of CrossFit either. So I was interested to see how he would like tackle this subject. This video is literally, as you can, if you read the title, it literally is my first ever CrossFit workout that I did. I filmed it and everything and I put it up there, um, but it genuinely was my first ever CrossFit workout. And it was in this uh, CrossFit gym that was named CrossFit RSD. And as you can see, <laughs> it was tiny. It was very, very small. Like literally if you wanted to do muscle ups or anything, which the whole time I was there, I was nowhere near being able to do that. But they literally had to take uh, panels out of the ceiling because the ceilings were basically as high as the ceilings are in here right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a fun time. And so in this community, there will be people who do not like CrossFit. There will be people who love CrossFit. And there'll be valid opinions on both sides. That is expected. Importantly, we have to separate the CrossFit Games from CrossFit. On the thumbnail, I show a CrossFit Games athlete, and then really just the average Joes who are taking part in CrossFit to develop their physical fitness. I think there are certainly valid critiques of certain aspects of CrossFit, but I also think there's some very good things that go on in certain CrossFit protocols, as there are 
negligent trainers in CrossFit spheres, of course there will be excellent, competent trainers. As there are people who do crazy stuff, there are people who approach cross CrossFit in a sensible manner. And so I think really we have to view it with that balance and on a spectrum, but regardless where you stand on... So I love that he brought that up because I... I couldn't agree more. Like, there are things for me personally that I am not the biggest fan of CrossFit of. You know, I still do CrossFit, but maybe I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of, of kipping pull-ups, people doing uh, kipping pull-ups before they're even close to being able to get a strict pull-up, right? And that's most people, most people that you talk to that do CrossFit, would most trainers and stuff, would probably agree with you on that point. And kipping pull-ups are definitely less and less popular as, as CrossFit evolves. But again... I agree that there are definitely things that I disagree with in CrossFit, but again, it doesn't change the fact that I still love it, you know, a lot, obviously. On this debate, I want this video to be transcendent. And yes, that's a big word, which I vaguely understand. And I want us to focus on the underlying messages throughout where this guy uses CrossFit as his tool to stay consistent. And consistency is, of course, vital in a fitness journey. I was really sad when I first watched this video that he cuts right after I, I try and do this handstand walk because right after he cuts, I get the longest handstand walk that I had ever gotten up to that point. And I was really hoping that he would, uh, he would show it, but he didn't. <laughs> And so regardless of what training protocol you use, it may be CrossFit. You may never do CrossFit. It may not be CrossFit. It doesn't really matter to the point of this video. It is those underlying messages. Uh, Angelica said, is this guy a trainer or doctor or does he just do commentary because he's also lost weight? So I don't think James is a, like a, any sort of weight loss um, story or anything like that. But James is like a, I'm pretty sure he's a trainer. He might have more credentials as well. But James is an incredibly smart dude. Like, I, I've never watched a video of his and been like, man, I not <laughs> this is making me sound like I'm also a smart dude, but I've watched videos of him that has made ha, have made me think that I I mean I he does a really great job of debunking a lot of the kind of garbage that you see in the fitness industry, the garbage that is completely useless, the garbage that is not helping other people, and he strips it down to like what are the basics, what are the the fundamentals, what are the things that are needed, right? Like, do we need to see people score? squatting on BOSU balls with 350 pounds on their back and doing backflips. Like, no, is that really going to help anybody? And so he does a really good job of like kind of debunking that stuff. So it's, it's very similar, not exactly the same as me. You know, obviously I focus more on like health at every size or uh, just weight loss stuff. He's more general fitness, but yeah, so that's kind of his like credentials, but he's just a really smart guy. Is, which can be applied to many different training protocols. And so if you don't know his channel, it's basically the most family-friendly PG channel ever. Bas I love you too, Hillary. Thank you very much. <laughs> basically, he's Disney. He's Derek from Frozen. That sounds right. <laughs> Didn't watch it. He does, however, upset some people as a former obese person when he discusses that obesity is not healthy in a very polite and respectful way. Obviously, people should get upset about that. However, he does deserve a great amount of criticism for that man bun. I commented this I commented this on his video if if James would like me to donate some of my hair to him I will do it I understand he is follically challenged and if if he needs any assistance I I am fine with with putting it in there you know I don't mind helping him out <laughs> My childhood here was kind of, it was a little bit rough at the start. My <laughs> Alan's in here, he said, he said, one of my favorite people talking about one of my favorite people because I talked about one of my favorite people. <laughs> That's pretty much how it works now, you know? <laughs> Mom was, she was a drug addict at that time, and we were actually, me and my siblings were taken away from her when I was three years old. And luckily, she got clean after a year. So we were put back with her, which is something that really doesn't happen very much. And so there are several stages to a fitness journey, which is a key point in this video in itself. He didn't initially lose the fat through CrossFit. He did it through dietary changes and also some movement, which of course becomes easier if you are losing fat from a state of morbid obesity. Moving around becomes more accessible. But so, and I, that is, that is true, right? So I... 100% and I've made this pretty clear but I guess I've gotten some criticism because of this video because people said I've, I've seen little literal comments on like other websites like completely different websites of like oh that's the guy that said he lost weight doing CrossFit when he didn't lose the weight doing CrossFit and I'm like 
I literally never said, never said I lost weight because I did CrossFit. CrossFit has helped me maintain my weight, certainly, but I have never said, oh, because of I lost 180 pounds doing CrossFit. And even in this video, that was never said. And so, I don't know, that that was one thing that was, like, frustrating because, again, James was able to pick it up. Like, it's not like it's some, like, thing that I'm making up. It's some secret that I'm trying to, like, lie to people that CrossFit was the thing that made me lose weight. Like, no, it was, it's something that helps me. Um, but, yeah. Also, thank, thanks, Alan. Loving this new format for you. You are money live. Thanks. Yeah, I, I actually, I really enjoyed doing these live videos. Like, I didn't think I would as much. Like, I thought I would enjoy it. That's why I went for it. But it's, like... It makes recording a video immensely more fun. So I really, I really enjoy it. But we, we dealt with being, you know, a really low income family. So that's my, that right there is my best friend, Nolan. We are still best friends to this day. Uh, we were just hanging out two nights ago. Um, and yeah, that was an Atticus shirt. I'm not sure if you guys remember that from way back in the day. This was, I think this was my older sister's shirt and she gave it to me because she was like super punk. Like she used to like cut her hair super short and have like the spiky with like the pink and like black and like wear studs and everything. And I just remember I like, I never met her until I was like eight or nine years old because like I mentioned earlier in this video, um, my family was really, really uh, broken at the start when I was young. Like my, my sister, PJ who is my older sister that that shirt came from, she literally didn't, she, I didn't, never met her until I was eight because she lived with um, her father's mother, so her grandmother, and so I didn't even know, I literally didn't know she existed. Like, I remember when I met her, and I was just like, wait, I have another sister? And so, yeah, it was, my life when I was younger was really, really kind of crazy, um, and we, we kind of go into it a little bit more. We were in with government housing and we tried to find food as cheap as you possibly could to feed as many people And then the way that we ate my mom was I mean come on look at this Look at that mean mug right there <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing right there But I am trying so hard to be the coolest And also like just um, side note These marks here right you're, You see those marks on that skateboard and you're like dude that guy obviously is a good skater like he can grind he can do board slides he can do some no slides he can do some tail slides like dang he's crushing it man you know we even got the trucks are all messed up all marked up um that's all fake <laughs> i would literally go up to curbs and grab my skateboard and i would just go <laughs> and i would just like scratch it against the curb because i mean i was the biggest poser man like I could skate. I can still skate. Like, I can get from point A to point B. But your boy was never good at doing tricks or anything. Because I was, I was a big guy, right? And so I was... I was such a... <laughs> I was such a weenie. Like, I was such a weenie. I did not want to fall. And so I would just lie. <laughs> and I would, I would fake <laughs> scratch up my board. Oh, man. I remember also I used to do it with my shoes. I would I would grab my shoes and just rub them against the, the grip tape. And so they looked like I was skating. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. So I'm exposing myself. But that 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 was true. <laughs> I was so busy working all the time that it's not like we sat down and ate dinner together. It was like she would make food and then there you'd go and get the food. Right. And so if you wanted seconds or thirds or my case fourths, like you had to eat fast and then you got more. And so this is. So this is 100% like that's what it was like when I was growing up. Like for me, food, for my whole family, obviously we couldn't afford health. health I don't want to call it healthy food, but we couldn't afford, afford like organic or anything. Like literally like growing up, I ate hamburger helper, uh, ramen. We ate like chicken and rice, you know, macaroni with hot dogs in it. Um, like on like a very, very special occasion, my mom would make French toast in the morning, but most of the time it was like, uh, big bowls of cereal. So it was all about like, for me growing up, food was always about how, what's the cheapest we can get it and how can we make the most amount? And then when we would eat, and I kind of explained it just now, when we would eat, it was, we're going to make a big pot of food and you know, eat until you're full basically. Right. And so for me, it was like, okay, well the faster I eat, 
that means I can get more I can get more food, right? So if 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 there's only um, you know, there's only one pot of food, if I'm able to eat fast, I'll be able to get three servings, you know? And that's just that's how it was. Like growing up, that's how food was. And then like a treat for us because again, we didn't have much money. So my mom and then she always ha- my mom always harbored a lot of guilt. These are conversations we've had. I've had her talk about it on the channel as well. But my mom has always always harbored a lot of guilt because of, you know, our past, like her um, being a drug addict, us getting taken away from her, um, CPS being involved in our lives, us finally being back with her. But like, she always harbored a lot of guilt because she felt like she couldn't give a lot, right? She like, she always felt like she couldn't give us what we deserved, right, is in her mind. But what she could always do was food, right? Like she could always get like, if, if she could buy us anything, it was food, for some reason, that's just how it was. Like, yeah, she would go to the dollar store and get us little toys and trinkets. But, like, if we went out to get fast food, like, that was a big deal for my family. Like, I remember every single year at the end of the school year, my family would go. We would go to um, Hometown Buffet and, like, we would have, like, it was, like, our party. Like, that's what that's what we did. And so food for us was always kind of a – it was a celebratory thing, but it was always, like, a – it was like if things are going good, we got more food. That's kind of how it was. But okay, I'm, let's keep going. This issue is a valid contributor to a journey into obesity and other health issues in many cases. Some of the cheaper foods, the ready meals, the ready to eat type meals, which are high on calories and not very nutritious. I was probably about 300 pounds when I graduated, around there. It, so I, I was addicted to really soda. I probably drank dairy. over a And it's crazy because like I didn't even notice it it's only something that I noticed now looking back on it. And so here are some health and lifestyle issues that he struggled with being in a state of obesity. At my heaviest, I weighed 360 pounds. That's my oldest brother, Travis, right there. I remember I remember looking at this picture and being like, duh, that's not how I look. <laughs> like being like, that's not how I look. No, there's no way. But it, it absolutely was. And this was actually a, I remember I got this shirt at Burlington Co. Factory. It was a rock aware shirt. And I really liked going to Burlington because they had a, a really large selection of big and tall clothes. So they would have like, um, they would have like a, a large selection, like a good amount compared to any other store. Like it was by far the best and it was pretty cheap, right? Because it's Burlington Co. Factory, it's, everything's marked down. Um, but I remember, and this was a 5XL shirt. I remember seeing this picture and being like, like I don't want to say mortified, but I just remember seeing my gut right here, my my spare tire or whatever you want to call it, and I was just like, man, really? That's how I look? Like I was really not, not feeling it. But yeah, I was wearing a size five XL shirt and fifty six inch pants. My feet started to really scab. It's my best friend Nolan again. So that that was at his brother's wedding. So this is my other friend Nathan, his brother. Scab. I was definitely like I had really black eyes. And as anybody when they're that heavy, it was just really lethargic. Yeah. So when I was, um, when I was, when I was at my heaviest, I remember there was a couple things. Like I luckily never had any like legit serious. Like they were like you're pre-diabetic or you you are. I'm probably if I would have went to the doctors right before I'd lost weight, they probably would have told me that to be honest. But I didn't. Um, but. I, I never had anything like, oh, wow, you're actually having issues. But I remember for me, like the things that I noticed were one, as you guys can see um, right here, like I had these dark circles under my eyes. And it's not like this was like early. This was a band practice. I was fully awake. I was playing drums, very loud drums. So it's not like I was tired, <laughs> but I just dealt with circles under my eyes. Um, I had really dry, like my the skin on my elbows and my knees and also my knuckles were very dry and they would they were starting to turn black um and then and my, yeah my knees i said that but then also my feet were starting to scab really bad and my mom when i first showed her that she freaked out she was not having it um and i remember i was like no no no, it's probably just like athlete's footer i'm just like sweating in my shoes it's fine but she was like this is not good this should not be happening again i was like 19 20 you know years old and this was happening and so again I never had any like a doctor say like hey you this is gonna you're gonna die soon or anything like that but I had those little things that looking back now I'm like okay those were red flags really just no energy this sounds crazy but I was 20 years old and I was literally terrified of being home alone to be fair Joe Pesci trying to rob my house <laughs> would terrify me too <laughs> Oh, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> That's golden, man. Um, but yeah, so like, but I seriously was. <laughs> Um, but I, I genuinely was afraid of being home alone. Like no joke. I was, I was afraid of, cause I, I, I don't know what it was, but for some reason I was always cognizant of my mortality, right? That's the best way I can explain it. And it was, it was tough, man. Again, I was 20 years old at this point and yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was tough for me for sure. Because I was like, if I have a heart attack and nobody's here, what am I going to do? And I was 20. Trying to keep it a little bit lighthearted, but to wrap up his very serious journey into obesity, he says this. I just felt like there was nothing I can do. I got to a point at my heaviest where I was just, I was okay with dying at before I was 40. That is not a lie. Like, I cannot explain to you, like, I still struggle with anxiety. You guys know that. But I cannot explain to you how much anxiety I had when I was at my heaviest just about my mortality. Like any sort of time my heart would kind of start to race. Any time I maybe would feel a little lightheaded or any, you know, anything like with little things, right? Like the, when I, if that happens to me now, I don't stress out too much about it. I'm like, oh, I probably haven't drinking enough water today, which is probably true. But I was so scared I was so scared but the thing is is that because it had been happening my whole life I also was like well then I I am there's no way I'm I'm gonna live past 40 I just remember thinking that because I would watch those documentaries of people being like airlifted out of their house or you know they had to like literally break a wall to get them out and stuff and I as as extreme as this sounds I remember thinking like there, I wonder when I'm going to get there. Like it wasn't really a, it was, if I was being very honest, if I was kind of like trying to make myself feel better, I'd be like, no, 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 I'm never going to get to that point. But like me seeing that every single year I'm gaining weight, I'm gaining weight, I'm gaining weight, I'm gaining weight. And like, I just was like, eventually like there's only one end to this. And so it was, I don't know. And again, I was 20 years old having these fears. In my head, I realized this is my fault. Like I'm doing this to myself. The choices I'm making have got me to this point. So I just need to make different choices and see where I can go, right? I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to start like, uh, this is it. I implemented what I call the common sense diet. Cut out soda, cut out like junk food and cut out fast food. And much of health and fitness is essentially common sense. But sadly, in many cases, the health and fitness industry chooses making bunts over common sense information. Sound Let's say, oh, 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 I have said this so many times, like the common sense diet, just like making, just making smart, choices right it's not gonna fix everything but like it is such a powerful tool and like you don't need you guys see what i eat now right i don't eat anything crazy i eat microwave chicken and microwave broccoli and microwave <laughs> rice and like oatmeal and like i don't eat anything crazy Be why because one i'm not i don't want to spend money on it and two it's not necessary it's not necessary you don't need it and so for me it's incredibly incredibly important because again like you guys saw earlier in the video where I come from my mind is always going to come from that place it, it just is right the person that can't afford xyz thing but I want to make it very clear to people you do not need those things to lose weight you don't need them you don't even need them to like really seriously improve your fitness. Like I'm not saying I'm like a game, CrossFit Games level athlete or anything like that, but I am very fit. Like I don't like to toot my own horn, but I am a pretty fit guy. I can do muscle ups. I can do handstand walks. I can do box jumps. I can run a marathon. I can bike for 40 miles. Like I am a pretty fit guy, right? And that all is from very simple changes that, are not that expensive that are like it's there's no secret right that's why this stuff is so important to me and that's why i get so fired up about this stuff is because i did it man and like there's nothing special about me 
Like, there seriously isn't. I'm not some person that, like, but when I was in high school, I was actually a really good athlete. Nah. <laughs> I couldn't even make it on my football team because your boy cried when I got made fun of and I left. Like, I've never been some serious athlete that, like, gained some weight and then lost it and then became an athlete again. Trust me. That wasn't me. Sounds kind of simple, but at the time, like, that was most of my diet. It helped me a lot because... At the time when I first started, I had really not much money at all. So I couldn't afford a gym membership, so I wasn't able to go to the gym. And so not having enough money for a gym membership, but focusing on dietary changes. These are the real challenges that are perhaps not commonly projected. Not everyone who wants to make a change can afford a gym membership, can afford certain foods, or has the confidence to go to the gym, for example. Or in that case, to afford home equipment. Everyone has their own challenges to face. That is the nuance of health and fitness. And that is something that I essentially project in every video I make. When you're as heavy as I was, if you just make a small change, you'll see a big result. I made that small change, saw a big result, was more motivated to make another change to see more results, and then it just kind of compounded and it was like a domino effect. And to the ulterior motive of his journey, meeting Ellen. So I remember when I first started my YouTube, I told myself like, I want to make a video about my loose skin to show people that were following me. At this time, I think I had like 4,000 subscribers, right? I was just trying to show them the question they were asking. I put it up and then it just blew up and went completely viral and- I love this young man. After losing an incredible 160 pounds, our next guest bravely posted a video of himself revealing his biggest insecurity. When I ended that video and I said, I'm comfortable in my skin, I meant that. I am comfortable in my skin, and I love this skin. <laughs> the skin is a battle scar from where I've been and, and where I was. I, I made it so I was that big. You know what I mean? That was a choice I made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I watch this, it's kind of funny now looking back because I was like yelling so loud. <laughs> I mean, like it's so unnecessary, but I was so hyped up and like I was like so excited and I was just like, yeah, I lost weight. And Ellen, can you hear me? <laughs> it's a battle scar, Ellen. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was so hyped up and like, oh man. But it, that was such a cool experience. Like it was such, it was such, such a blessing to be on that show. Like, I know that there's a lot of stuff going on. I didn't see any of that stuff. I didn't deal with any of that stuff. And then, like, if it did happen, that that's really, really sucky. And like, I'm really sorry that happened but I can only speak from my experience and from my experience I didn't see any of that stuff um but yeah it was it was seriously a a, a crazy experience and also I swear I'm not wearing lipstick it just looks like it for some reason I have no idea I, I am wearing makeup though when I was on Ellen <laughs> And it was a choice that I made to get smaller. And so he did a physique show as a challenge, but essentially that wasn't compatible mm -hmm. with someone who's gone from a state of morbid obesity, one extreme, to perhaps another extreme. And he talks about his binge eating disorder. So perhaps physique competitions are not the most sustainable thing for him to do. And this is where he transitioned to CrossFit, which is something which he found helped him with his sustainability. People, of course... So I'm, I love, seriously, like this, this was probably my favorite part of the video that he made because I'm, I'm so in it, of course, cause he's a smart guy, but like I, this is something that I talk about all the time, right? If you guys, if you guys are here in the live streams, if you guys are here, if you're in the discord where I talk about it all the time, like finding something that is sustainable, right? And for me, like doing the bodybuilding shows, like that wasn't going to work for me. Like as being from coming from someone that was a food addict to try and really, really, really cut my calories down and get like shredded for these shows. Like I did one and like before I even did the show, I was I already knew like I'm never going to be doing another one. He's <laughs> like no shade on anyone that does them. Do your thing. I'm not saying you can't do them. But for me, it was like, OK, this isn't going to work. And that's like I got seriously. There's like I don't know how to explain it other than I got lucky. Like I got lucky finding CrossFit. Because it really completely shifted my view of fitness and shifted my view of how I'm eating and what I'm doing and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like it really did shift like so much. And I, I talk about it a little bit more in the video. Can make their own decisions. And this is why he decided to go the CrossFit route. And it's funny because he actually met his girlfriend now at the show and she did CrossFit. I'm talking about my brother right there. He was kind of interested in it. 
he was interested in her. Chasing the ladies, classic. And he started doing it. <laughs> Seeing how much he fell in love with CrossFit, like he was in right at the start. I ended up going to his gym. I just like fell in love with it. And so his brother got him into it. And here are the transcendent messages that I want to project. And this of course could be from CrossFit or another training protocol. CrossFit has that community aspect of like, you are doing the same workout as all these other people you're suffering together. And it makes the gym less of like an isolated thing. Especially like being a YouTuber, I'm alone a lot of the day. <laughs> Still true. <laughs> Like going to my CrossFit gym and seeing my friends there, seeing my brother there, seeing everyone there, it really is like a family. And I'm sorry, I don't care if you love or hate CrossFit, that is a beautiful message. And when it comes to that simple element of enjoying your training, of course that's extremely important in a sustainable fitness journey. And so firstly, as this is getting a bit commercially, I know, it's not as though it's just all bells and whistles and flowers and rainbows and this guy does CrossFit and everything's brilliant. Of course there's gonna be disadvantages. Of course there's gonna be tough issues. Of course there may be setbacks. And of course we have to think analytically. I've been able to do a muscle up. All of these things, as silly as it sounds, like I never thought I would do ever with my body. And I'm still learning stuff daily. But the things that he can do now that he thought he would never do is an inspiring message. Now I eat to perform and like I eat to feel good. And I also eat a lot of microwave things. <laughs> So as a last message, not just being satisfied with where you are, of course, appreciating it, never forgetting where you've come from, but also setting new goals to strive towards. And I never want to just use the fact that, well, you used to be 360 pounds, so why aren't you happy where you are? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy where I am, but just because I was there doesn't mean I can't go, you know, this way further and try and get as fit as possible. So that, that little last thing that I was talking about, like that is kind of what drives me every day now right like I think that being able to lose weight and keep it off is an, an incredible accomplishment right something that I'm very proud of being able to do but for me it's like I don't want to just stop there and I, I it's important for me that I don't use the fact like I don't want to ever be like wow you're pretty fit for a guy that lost 180 pounds right you're pretty fit for a guy that used to be um that used to be 360 pounds like that's not what I want and like at, at first that was nice and I did like that compliment and it meant it meant a lot for me. Right. But now I want to be just a fit guy. You know, that's it. And Well, that's not all I want to be. But like that's that's what I'm going for. And like I just want to not just a fit guy, but I want to be someone that pushes myself to be like literally the best version of myself physically possible because why not? Right. I want to show people what's possible. But yeah, that was a really cool video by James. And I just figured it would be fun to kind of, uh, uh, you know, react to it or whatever. Kind of show you guys my thoughts on it. Obey the warning signs. And when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.